final when Jet Trump Six. PTC of the season. He played in. Four nil in the second, and then as we've seen, And very disappointingly for him, he was beaten in the last 16 of the... Which is just north of Stoke-on-Trent in the English Midlands. And then he beat 28. Murphy 4-2, making a century break en route. Won two qualifying matches to make the last 32 of the Gardinia Open, which was played a couple of weeks ago. Over there in Poland, he overcame the likes of Jamie Jones, Martin Gould, Tian Peng Fei, Stephen Maguire, and then in the final, beat Jamie Burnett 4 3, that after leading 3 0. So he won seven matches in the Gardinia Open. 43. Looking to win his fifth match in this tournament. 44. And I think we can safely say he's won the first frame of this contest. Fifty-one. 
57. Fifty-eight. Now there's enough on the table here for Robertson to make a century. Sixty-five. Sixty-six. Seventy three, seventy four, <coughs> again a ridiculous bounce. These cushions are so, so seventy nine. Seventy nine. Neil Robertson, seventy nine, and the first train. No century, but nevertheless, a very agreeable start for Neil Robertson. Andrew Paget doesn't pot a single ball in the opener. Robertson with a break of 79, swiftly takes a 1-0 lead. Happy to get off to a good start, but not happy with the way the table's playing. Sorry to sound like a, a broken record, but it really is a problem I think we're going to see as the, the day progresses. I noticed it's particularly in the last couple of matches last night, the Doc Williams game neither player could get to grips I suppose you could say pretty much the same thing about Higgins Carter first up this morning so what about the other quarterfinals well you can see Carter and Perry have just begun their match right at the start of the first frame Carter's on a blue at the moment in the middle pocket Mark Allen he's taking on Ben Wollaston across the arena on the opposite side of the Lotto Auditorium they're in the early stages of frame one as well and in a few moments Mark Selby will begin against the second Poo. frame Neil Robertson to break Thirty years of age, Andrew Paget, from Newport in Wales, which is now the traditional home of the Welsh Open. <laughs> On his website, he describes himself as the Welsh Wizard. <laughs> well, I think that might be exaggerating somewhat. Practice partner of Mark Williams. And of course that great achievement on his CV, qualifying for the Crucible last year when he beat Zhang Ander 
Bjorn Haniver from right here in Belgium, actually. Nigel Bond, and then in the final qualifying round, Andrew Higginson. Padgett actually gave a good account of himself at the Crucible, losing only 10-7 to Jamie Cope. Went for the plants, overcooked it. Andrew Padgett, three. Plays out of the Tradiga Snooker Centre. And the town of Tradiga has got a real place in snooker history because that was where Cliff Wilson, former world amateur champion, and Ray Reardon both emerged from. And the allegiance to one player or the other basically split the town. <coughs> Reardon went on to move to the to the Midlands. Instead of being a coal miner, he became a policeman and then eventually a professional snooker player. Won six world titles. Wilson basically retired from the game before his time. And still a very young man when he hung up his cue originally. It was only when the game became immensely popular in the late 70s early 80s he was persuaded to start playing again and incredibly in his 40s he got into the top 16 Ray Reardon was 80 by the way recently looks good on it Cliff Wilson sadly passed away a few years ago but they were both phenomenal players Wilson, a lot more of a flare, attacking down a flare. Reardon, One. a tremendous tactician. Five. By the way, there wasn't much of a, a break for Mark Selby after beating Paul Davis in 4 3 on the stroke of noon, British time, 1 o'clock here in Antwerp. I thought he might be given 10 15 minutes to settle down and reinvigorate himself for the quarterfinals as it is he's straight back out there taking on Marco Fu the first frame has begun no frames on the board yet in the other quarterfinals although it does look as though Mark Allen will take a 1-0 lead over Ben Wollaston Allen currently on a break of 65 in their opener 13 
19. Twenty. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Neil Robertson, eighth in the world rankings at the moment. Andrew Padgett, of course, unranked because he's not on the tour anymore. Lost his place at the end of last season. Oh, what a terrible kick encountered by Robertson again there. Every so often, the table just throws them a curveball. Another inch on the wide ball there of travel, and the pot on the red would have been quite simple as it is. Although it looks okay, this is a really deceptive angle. Robertson can pot it across the top cushion, but it takes an awful lot of accuracy. Lovely. 44. But the points he's earned from this tournament so far, Andrew Padgett has <laughs> climbed to 38th 51. on the players to a championship order of merit. As Robertson pots 53. two for the price of one. Robertson currently is third on the order of merit, but <laughs> he could possibly end the day right at the very top, certainly if he captures the title. Spot, yes, thanks for Robertson. So he can get through to this red, but he's still not happy. Got a bad reaction off the pink. It straightened, he knew it had kicked. And in the end, I think he was relieved to see it actually go into the pocket. Super pot, it really was. And now Robertson just needs this relatively simple black. In it goes, and 2 0 is beckoning. Sixty seven. Sixty-eight. 
72. Neil Robertson, 72 well, Neil in the Robertson second frame. Is stuck in the 70s. Not in a fashion sense. For the first two frames, he's made breaks of 79 and there, 72. He leads Andrew Paget 2 0. You might have heard a, a burst of applause from the adjoining table here. That's because Ali Carter has just taken a 1 0 lead over Joe Perry, and I believe it was with a century break. Mark Allen also off to a flyer against Ben Wollaston. Allen 1, Wollaston 0. And it looks as though Mark Selby is going to take the first frame against Marco Fu. Currently, he's on a break of 42. And he leads by 62 points with only four reds and therefore 59 points on the table. So it appears here at the Antwerp Open that the big guns are beginning to fire. It's Selby or Fu against Carter or Perry. Robertson, should he come through, will play either Allen or Wollaston. The semi finals are due to begin at 3 o'clock British time. That's 4 o'clock Central European. And to the third frame. And the and final, break. 8 o'clock Central European time, 7 o'clock British. fluke only worth one point though Neil Robertson one no remorse from Robertson just laying the snooker in behind the brown and although that shot looks quite simple on these fast cloths it isn't thankfully for Andrew Padgett the pack was still pretty close Still pretty tightly knit, and so leaving a red touching well wasn't exactly likely. There won't be any letting up from Neil Robertson. He's won too many of these PTC events. He knows exactly what the final day is all about. If you can win your early matches relatively comfortably, it gives you more recovery time between contests. Selby might be okay at the moment, but after that very lengthy opening match against Paul Davison, if he doesn't beat Marco Fu easily, he'll go into his semi-final vulnerable to being more than a little fatigued 
Whereas Robertson, if he can win this one, 4-0, 4-1, <coughs> will probably have an hour and a half to rest and recuperate. Not physically so much, but mentally. Foul. And miss. Neil Robertson, four. Surprised he's having the cue ball back here. He got Paget in not a small amount of trouble. Yeah, sorry. Thanks. I can see that. This time contact made on the red, but it's been left to the middle pocket. One. Six. I think open plan arenas are Neil tremendous. Robinson. I think they're a really Six. good addition to the sport. The one drawback is that sometimes when applause occurs from another table, it can be off putting for a player who's over a shot. And I think Robertson was affected there by the applause from table two. One. Six. Seven. Well, Paget's scoring time at the table in the first two frames consisted of a single red. Fourteen. Plus a yellow. The situation 15. a lot more promising. Twenty three. Thirty. Thirty-one. 
38. Well, that was a pretty good split. Didn't deserve to go in off, certainly. And now here, this is an opportunity to win the 46. frame. 46. Having spent so much of the last couple of frames sitting down, this is a really good effort. Forty-seven. Fifty-three. Well, if you thought that Andrew Paget was going to be a walkover, I think you might 59. have to revise your opinion. He's taken these beautifully. Sixty. Still work to do though. If he pots the pink, he'll be 55 ahead with 59 on, which means one more red required. Sixty-six. Sixty-seven. And now a definite possibility of a century. Seventy-four. I think it would be his first on TV. Oh, and just as I say that. Andrew Padgett, 74. Nevertheless, a 74 break. And Andrew Padgett contributes to what's so far been a pretty high quality match. Breaks of 79 and 72. Took Neil Robertson into a 2 0 lead. And a run of 74 here should have taken Padgett back to 2 1. Robertson carrying on, even though he needs three snookers. What Robertson is working on is a snooker that Eight. yields a free ball. If he got a four-point penalty snooker that gave a free ball, if he potted the free ball with a black and then all of the colours, he would force yeah, a spotted black. Eight. But he's not going to do it with shots like that. Frame over now. Andrew Padgett one in the frame. 74 break doing the trick. Neil Robertson still in front. Now though, he leads the amateur by only two frames to one. Interesting stuff so far. As for the other quarterfinals, well, Ali Carter is 1-0 up on Joe Perry. 
the second frame very much in the balance with four reds left it's 1-0 to Mark Allen over Ben Wollaston Wollaston though 45 in front with four reds left in the second frame there and I'm not quite sure what's happening in the Mark Selby, Marco Fu match they're on table four and that scoreboard has been playing up all week so I think the, the live scoring there might have it just ceased to work. I think it's fair to assume that Selby is in a 1 0 lead. Because when the scoreboard went kaput, who needed snookers? Well, Neil Robertson has worn a scowl on his face for much of the match. I think that's to do with the fact he doesn't particularly feel at home on the table. Thank you, frame four. Even so, though, breaks of 79 Robertson's and 72 break. have been responsible for him winning the first two frames. And now he wants to power on into a 3-1 lead. Tell you now officially it is 1 0 Selby over Foo. Just tried to flick the red away from the black. To open up the black. As it is, no contact made at all. But second prize might be position on the pink. It is. Seven. The black is freed, but we've seen on a number of occasions during this tournament that this particular shot into this particular pocket is not easy. Pinged it, Robertson did. Pinged it. Fifteen. That's the scene here. This big bank of spectators on the left hand side of your screen get to see three matches simultaneously. If they're watching the main match table, they're also seeing a lot of 23. very dull contacts, semi-kicks. It's a really good crowd in, as it was last year when Trump played O'Sullivan in that memorable final. Neil Robertson, 23.
Well, making Foul. contact with and the green was four. bad enough, but actually running off, that was really loose from Neil, Neil Robertson, who made a very good start to the match. Breaks of 79 and 72, but in the last couple of frames, he started to look a wee bit ragged. One. Six. Seven. Thirteen. Another good recovery pot from Andrew Paget. I think he's acquitting himself pretty well so far. Sixteen. Seventeen. Twenty-two. Score update for you on table three. Mark Allen and Ben Wollaston have shared the first two frames. Allen winning the first. Wollaston replying. Ali Carter 30. still 1-0 up on Joe Perry on table two. Carter 12 points ahead with the colours on in the second frame. 31. Thirty-nine. Forty-eight. 
45. Forty six, <coughs> well, how about this, Andrew Paget giving fifty three as good as he gets. 54. The amateur from Blackwood, which is near Newport in Wales, very much on course for 2 2. 61. Sixty-eight. Sixty-nine. Well, I can honestly say I didn't foresee this coming at all. At 2-0, I thought Robertson was going to steamroll the Paget. Anything but... Seventy-two. Seventy-nine. Well, on seventy-four in the and previous frame. Seventy-nine and French. First televised century. <laughs> Missed the red to the middle pocket there. On a break of 79, missed the yellow off its spot. Nevertheless, Andrew Paget is doing the main job. He's full level with Neil Robertson at two frames each. And a statistical quirk here. In all four frames, we've seen a 70-plus break made. And they've stopped in the 70s. Good stuff. And the possibility of a considerable shock. Just looking around the arena here, you can see that the Ali Carter Joe Perry table is being re racked for the start of the third frame. Carter won the second on the colours. So Ali Carter two, Joe Perry nil. Mark Allen and Ben Wollaston, they're in the early stages of the third frame, the first two having been shared. And Mark Selby has taken a 1 0 lead over Marco Fu. Here's the match stats. Robertson spotted more balls and scored more points. His pot success rate and his safety success rate is better. As is his potting from distance. But the main statistic is that Andrew Paget has two frames on the board. Robertson is far too experienced to panic. But he will be very annoyed with this particular shot. It was a sloppy safety, apart from the in-off, he shouldn't have hit the green anyway. And that's the, the opening that allowed Padgett to the table for the 79 break, with which he drew level. As I said before, these PTCs can be an avenue for players to regain their place on the circuit for next year. The amateurs who enter them, Joe Swale, by reaching the final of a PTC earlier this season, He's pretty much guaranteed his place back on the main circuit for the 2013-2014 campaign. And if Andrew Padgett can win this match, he might be about to do exactly the same. <laughs> way it works, this, by the way. 
Paget or Robertson will play Allen or Wollaston. Selby or Fu will play Carter or Perry. Neil Robertson, the winner of six world ranking events. That's major ranking events, the last of which was the 2010 World Open, six months after he won the World Championship. And last season, in Ireland and in Poland, he won two PTCs. And he's already won a PTC so far this season so if he goes on to capture the title here today that would be four of these tournaments won and that's no mean achievement 128 players thrown in all best of seven frame matches which leaves the the top seeds a little more vulnerable than the extended frame matches thank you frame five. First, though Andrew Padgett to break got to see off the considerable challenge being posed by Andrew Padgett In 2011, when Padgett qualified for the Crucible, his practice partner and good mate Mark Williams said some rather unkind things about him in a joking kind of way. He said he was the worst player ever to appear at the Crucible. Well, I can tell you that's completely not true. He isn't the worst player and nowhere near it. And from what we've seen so far here, remember he beat Stuart Bingham. <coughs> In the last 32, Padgett looks to be playing the snooker of his life, certainly in terms of his professional career. Pot and Robertson, One. but for no immediate return. Black won't pot, and so the only choice is safety. Neil Robertson, one.
Mark Selby 2 0 up on Marco Fu, having struggled for any kind of fluency in his first match today against Paul Davison. Selby has just knocked in the century break. 116, I believe it was. So Selby 2, Fu 0. Oh, terrible bounce again. Terrible. Just explosive. Hit the cushion and just took off. That's why the cue ball has gone into bulk and right back out again. Padgett can't get through to pop the pink, but the blue is available. <coughs> Andrew Padgett, one. Of course, now he's back in the match, the, the pressure increases. didn't cue that one all that smoothly. One. Very nice part from Robertson. Seven. No great reward though, is it? Cue ball a little too close to the one red he wanted to pot. Does have one to the middle. But even that's no bargain. too straight. I think there's some kind of angle there, but not a great deal. In the middle of where he wanted to be, not far enough for one red, too far for the other. <coughs> Neil Robertson, 13. I can tell you over on table three, Ben Wollaston. The PTC.
And it's looking good for Ali Carter on table two in frame three against Joe Perry. Carter already 2-0 ahead. On a 56 break in the third frame, needs one more red to leave Perry requiring a snooker. So 3-0 close at hand there. Foul. Andrew Panchet four. Well, remember in the previous frame, it was a sloppy enough from Robertson that allowed Panchet to the table for that 79 break. This one isn't going to be quite as destructive. Still, though, an unforced error, unlike Robertson. One. Very good indeed from Padgett. Not just the pot, but look how he held the cue ball for the pink. Seven. Thirteen. The applause you heard, by the way, greeted Ali Carter taking a 3-0 lead over Joe Perry, and I believe he did that with a century break. I'll let you know the precise details in a moment. Fourteen. Yes, it was a run of 109 from Carter. Andrew Panchet, 14. Now to position, no point in taking a pot on for a few extra points. He's played a good safety as well. He was an overwhelming favourite before a ball was potted.
playing in front of the television cameras. And yet, Padgett with breaks of 74 and 79 is drawn level, and now he fancies the job. Justifiably so. Well, I suppose. Well, it's a tight squeeze. to play that with left hand side to flick the red in couldn't do anything ambitious positionally and so this pink to the middle pocket is a real old pressure ball nicely played but could have done with Seven. maybe two or three more inches of roll on the cue ball.
Robertson's greatest assets, temperament. Realised the importance of this frame when it began and just buckled down. Neil Robertson. Well, I think from 11. the reaction he got a kick again there. It did seem to straighten up, didn't it? Hit the red into the thick jaw, as it were. Yes. Oh, undoubtedly a kick. The referee cleaning the white as well. Mr. Robertson, there is nothing you can do about that. Well, Padgett was at his stretching limit there. Just about reached the shot okay without the use of the extension. Played Seven. Really nicely. And if he can develop the two reds here to the left of the black, who knows? And well, they were developed, but seven. the pot wasn't completed. The only solace there for Andrew Paget, at least he's left awkward queuing. A terrible reaction. This table is playing so irritatingly because you never know when these kicks are going to occur, when these abnormal reactions are going to occur. Add to that the springy bounce off certain cushions at certain times, and you're placing a whole series of imponderables in a player's mind. An uncertainty often equals inaccuracy in snooker. Fourteen. The break goes to fourteen. Robertson's lead goes to twenty-six. So he will need the awkward red. Fifteen. Thirty-four points of the difference, thirty-five on the 22. table. Twenty-two. So Robertson defeats the slot in the last red down the start pushing to regain the lead. Twenty-three. Thirty. Thirty-two. Thirty-five. 
Neil Robertson, 35 in the frame. Put the pass in for Green after Andrew Pazic. And that's the right to attack in the pocket. Maybe concentrating too hard on a positional cannon. And so Neil Robertson, who flew into a 2-0 lead, finds himself back in front again. This time, he leads the Welsh amateur by three frames to two. One more needed for a place in the semi-finals. Interesting developments over on table three, where Ben Wollaston has just produced a 45 clearance, I believe it was, to snatch the fourth frame on the black from Mark Allen. Ben Wollaston leads 3-1 there. How about that? Ali Carter now leads Joe Perry 3-1. Perry dominated the fourth frame. Making a sizable break, certainly in the 80s. Maybe a little more than that. The slowest moving of the two quarter of the four quarter finals is Mark Selby against Marco Fu. Currently 2-0 to Selby. Nothing to choose between them in frame number three early on. So Andrew Padgett making a a rare appearance on TV, although he was in front of the television cameras at the Crucible in April 2011. That was the highlight of his career so far. This shot, not a highlight. Tried to develop the two reds. And thinking too heavily about them, overcut the pot. And by doing so, has he missed the boat? Two balls potted for Robertson, 55 from Padgett. Robertson's pot success rate is quite good actually, 92%. Safety success, 80%. Not really top notch, and maybe that's why he's dropped a couple of frames. Robertson's potting from distance is much better than average. And if you can tuck this one away, have an hour or so off. I think he'll come back into the semi-finals as an extremely difficult man to beat. The semi-finals, by the way, come your way at 3 o'clock British time. That's 4 o'clock Central European in around 90 minutes' time. And if you're wondering about our next snooker here on LiveWorldSnooker.tv, well, it's a very big event indeed. It's the China International, the International Championship in Chengdu in the People's Republic. It's a nine-day tournament beginning next Sunday. And in terms of the session times, well, the first session every day is 6.30 British time, 7.30 Central European. Eight wild cards will be on display. <coughs> 32 players off the main world ranking event circuit will join them and they will compete for a total prize fund of £625,000, which is around a million dollars. Thank you, US. ladies and gentlemen. Frame six. Neil Robertson to break. And the winner will receive £125,000, which is around US dollars plus massive world ranking points at stake. In fact, the world ranking point tariff for that tournament is exactly equal to the UK Championship, which is also coming your way here on Live World Snooker TV in December. And I suppose as a sign of its status, the International Championship will have matches right from the wildcard playoff round played over the best of 11 frames and then the semi-finals are over the best of 17 with the final the best of 19. Interestingly actually the semi-finals are being played on separate days one on Friday one on Saturday and then the final in Chengdu two weeks today. Neil Robertson wants to win a ranking event in China for the first time. It's something he's wanted to tick off the list for a while now. Hasn't been able to do it. 
At the moment, though, just concentrating on getting to the semi-finals here. Eight. It's a really good snooker city, Antwerp. I remember coming here in the early 90s when the events were played at the 16. Matchroom Shinport, which is a, a snooker club. 17. With an auditorium on the side of it. Not too far from the large arena where they used to play the Antwerp tennis. I remember turning up for one event and there were coaches everywhere. Just hundreds of them. Couldn't work out what was occurring. We 24. Luciano Pavarotti was singing in concert just up the road from where we were playing the snooker. 25. And I always remember that night because <coughs> Jimmy White ran through Dean Reynolds in no time, 5-0. Someone actually said, inadvertently, Jimmy's playing like a symphony orchestra, when in fact there was one just up the road. 32. We had invitation events in Antwerp, full-scale world ranking events also. The likes of Hendry and Davis captured titles in this town. Oh. Foul. And there Neil Robertson, 32. Robertson caught the Andrew Padgett, four. Incorrect red first, and that's why he went in off. Wasn't quite sure whether he could get through. Just a, a glancing blow off the blocking red initially, and although he made the pot. That's why the key ball found the pocket. One. Very good part from Andrew Padgett. Super. Let me quickly tell you it's going to be 3-0 to Mark Selby over on table four against Marco Fu. Eight. In fact, the third frame has just been completed, so officially it is Selby 3, Fu 0. Nine. in frames number three and four. 40. Padgett took his chance really nicely. Breaks of 74 and 79. And this is another really good 15. scoring opportunity. Made possible by that in-off from Robertson. 21. Twenty-two. Twenty-nine.
I've told you he qualified for the Crucible last year, but if he could beat Neil Robertson here, in terms of furthering his snooker career, you could argue this would be 30. maybe even a more important victory than the one which took him to the Crucible. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Of course it was Robertson's own fault that he caught the incorrect red first. Going in off though was a little unlucky. And it looks like being very expensive. Forty-three. Forty-four. Well, this is a revelatory performance from Andrew Padgett. Never seen him play as well as this. Fifty-one. Fifty-seven. Paget's third half century of the match. Fifty-eight. And now by potting the black, he'll be thirty-seven in front with thirty-five on. Sixty-five. Sixty-six. No doubt now we are going to a decider. And twice before I've posed the question, will we see Andrew Padgett's first century on television? Well, there's just enough on here. Seventy-three. Clear the colours to make one hundred exactly. Seventy-five. Seventy-eight. Seventy-nine. Sorry, eighty-two. Eighty-seven. Ninety-three. Come on, Andrew, knock it in. Well, he doesn't even try, I'm amazed. Played the exhibition shot. What's all that about? 93 in the play. And here's Padgett, 93 clearance for the team. Would you believe the scoreline? Neil Robertson, the 2010 world champion, three. Andrew Padgett, an amateur from Wales who lost his place on the main world ranking event tour last season, three also. Down to a decider. So what about the other quarterfinals? Well, Ali Carter, 3-1 up on Joe Terry, was 3-0 to Carter. Just looking to see actually if Terry made a century break there in the fourth frame. Indeed he did. No, that's incorrect information. In fact, Carter has made two century breaks 
in the match so far, 109 and 104. Perry, though, was certainly in the 80s when he won the fourth frame to avert the whitewash. So Carter 3, Perry 1, right at the start of frame number 5. Mark Selby 3-0 up on Marco Fu. And I do believe that Ben Wollaston is on the verge of beating Mark Allen. A final frame, Andrew Padgett to break. Wollaston leading Allen 3-1 after losing the opener. And Allen requiring a couple of snookers with just the colours on the table in frame five. No cigar for Neil Robertson from distance. The first chance goes to Paget. Oh, will he live to regret that? You know, I told you that Mark Allen needed a couple of snookers. Well, would you believe he's got them? And he spotted the yellow as well. Needs the remaining five colours in frame number five to keep the match on. <laughs> Again, Nine. awful contact screwing back. It's happened to Robertson time and time again in this match. The balls just seem to be skidding rather than getting any kind of purchase. Well, how about this as the cue ball's cleaned? I can tell you, Mark Allen did clear the colours. Required two snookers at one point in frame five. On the brink of defeat, now though he's trailing only 3-2. And Ben Wollaston having... Almost got to the line. Needs to do it all again. 16. <laughs> I'll tell you something else about this. Neil Robertson, as well. 16. Apart from the, the cushion bounce and all of the kicks, that right hand top pocket is an absolute brute. It's as tight as you like. <laughs> well, he got away with that, didn't he, Andrew Padgett? A different kind of kiss on the red as it came down the table, and that could have been left over a top corner.
Well, he cued that pretty well. Didn't quite punch it, though. Has he left the red? Does the red just to the right of the black pot? If it does, it could be a pretty serious mistake by Paget. Two. Well, it did pot, but the only way that Robertson could get position was by punching the cue ball through. Now he's just going to be content with safety. Neil Robertson, two. And not exactly a good one, was it? Well, same pocket, same kind of shot, well cued, but not quite accurate enough. Again, has he left the red? I don't think he has the one that's closest to the black. That needed to be so accurate at that pace. So, so accurate. That pocket, let me tell you, is so tight. One. Eight. Well, this Nine. time, Andrew Paget is the victim of a terrible kick and also a terrible bounce. There's the kick. Look at the bounce. Bump. Onto the cushion and seemingly off it faster than it went on. Just Andrew a few Padgett. things at the start Nine. of this deciding frame suggest to me that Paget might win it, you know. Now that seems strange <coughs> after a miss like that, but he's got away with a couple of things, went into the reds there quite lustily, and he's left nothing easy at all. The run in the decider so far is with him. As soon as he made contact, he knew he'd hit the red too thin, and he's left the red on. What a mistake. What an error. Anywhere short, anywhere around the ball line would have been fine.
toyed with the idea of potting the black there, coming down into Six. the business end of the table, but the blue was always the best option. It was the percentage option, certainly. Seven. Neil and Robertson again concentrating Seven. on position. Forgot about the pot. There's so many things in this frame that suggest to me that Paget's going to win it. Robertson's had multiple chances, still only 16 points ahead. And he's not seemed happy on the table from the get-go. The standard in the decider has been appreciably lower than any of the other frames. Understandable given the, the tension, given what's at stake, particularly. Not so sure at all. On well, the pots there, but position isn't. Seven. Four chances for Robertson. Total points 32. joining
so far, Andrew Padgett has played this. More like it. Peyton Marker. Three three there. And you think surely they're going to get over the line, and they don't. All the way through the frame, I've just had a hunch that somehow Paget's going to win it. You've given me no evidence to suggest that's going to be the case so far in the decider. But six scoring visits. Neil Robertson. One. For Neil Robertson. Equal 34 <laughs> points, and he hasn't got the snooker there. A wall of colours to get behind yellow, pink, and brown, and he's not achieved it. is behind the black. <coughs> Robertson coming off two cushions with a touch of running side, trying to hit <laughs> one of them turning and going to ball. Oh totally misjudged it 
hit the red. He wanted to, but on the incorrect side. And now what an opportunity for Andrew Paget. Not an awkward ball on the table. One. Applause there Four. greets another result. Ali Carter putting his cue away on table two. Very satisfied. Oh, no, from Andrew. No, no, no. Carter very satisfied with a 4-1 win. Four. Over Joe Perry. Just completed. What a terrible miss. And he's not been directly punished for it. So in the top half of the draw, we know that Mark Selby will play <laughs> Ali Carter in one semi-final. But what about the bottom half? By the way, if you're wondering about Mark Allen Van Wollaston, well, their deciding frame is underway. Allen opened the scoring with a break of 24, which has now reached its conclusion. Played a terrible designing frame. How are we still in this? I just don't know. Super part, wasn't it? Just enough of the red available for Padgett to pot it Great into the middle pocket straight. Andrew Padgett, one. Now, was that a little clumsy? Has he given Robertson the side cushion to be able to hit, to be able to make contact with the snooker? Foul. Andrew Padgett. This feeling four. about this frame, I keep telling you, everything's going against Robertson. He's not playing well. He's made mistakes, and the run is now against him also. to see an underdog do well but the way that Padgett's played in the deciding frame he doesn't deserve to get the victory it's been one mistake after another that after a match in which he's generally 
acquitted himself really well with breaks of 74 or 79 and to draw level at 3-3 a run of 93 One. Well, still nothing coming easy for Robertson. Far from ideal position. Blue goes to the middle pocket. But is it worth it? Can he get on the yellow in any kind of way? Neil Robertson, one. Not bad, but he's not as tight in behind the black as he might have been. <coughs> Foul, and the miss. Neil Robertson, four. The blue blocking Robertson's potting path with the yellow to that left hand ball pocket and so there was hardly any hesitation Robertson having the cue ball replaced yeah. foul and the miss Neil Robertson four now this time the cue ball has come far enough across the table for Robertson to be able to pop the yellow to the middle but it's so thin he can't control the cue ball I think this one is going to go back as well <coughs> Robertson now 20 points in front so Paget has to make contact with the next two escape attempts otherwise he's going to require a snooker himself uh -huh. yeah. Foul, the miss. Near Robertson, four. Well, based on what we've seen before, the cue ball definitely going back again. Now, 24 points the difference, so if Paget mm -hmm. doesn't yeah. make contact this time, he will need a snooker. up to win on the black I wouldn't be surprised at all the way this frame's gone would not be surprised at all and here's the chance here's the chance honestly I don't know why it is it's not scientific but when you've seen so many deciders of this nature they all seem to follow the same pattern two Just knew that yellow at the last resort. Fluke snooker. Now four pots away Five. from what would be an extraordinary victory because he's played this decider very badly indeed. And yet he's still got the chance to snatch it. Nine. Talk about riding your luck. Twenty. Nine. 
Jones has yeah, won yeah. by four frames to three. Sportsman like Jones. Neil Robinson shaking his hands to him and saying, well done. The Welsh amateur prevails. But please don't ask me how. I've got no idea. Logic went out of the window in that last frame. He played a terrible decider. He made one mistake after the next. In the end, though, a succession of Robertson mistakes. And ultimately, uh, an extraordinary piece of good fortune. Fluking a snooker out of a snooker. And we have the, the biggest upset, I think, of the tournament so far. That's all rounded off rather nicely because Mark Selby is through with a 4-0 win over Marco Fu. He will now play Ali Carter in the semi-finals. Carter beating Joe Perry 4-1. Andrew Paget has beaten Neil Robertson 4-3, ending Robertson's 11-match winning run in PTCs. He won seven of them, spaced over a couple of months in qualifying and then in the main event in Poland. He won four here.